Is it possible to charge your mobile phone from a tea light? Really? A tea light? Why would you want to charge a mobile phone from a tea light? Well, to establish if you can. Inquiring minds need to know. Of course, there's always the zombie apocalypse to consider. Why would you even think you could use a tea light as a charging source? Simply put, the heat from the flame represents energy, and that energy can be converted into electrical power. OK, but how could we tell if it's actually possible to charge your phone? Well, we would need to answer a couple of questions. How much power does your mobile phone need from a charger? And what is the level of energy in a candle flame? If we can answer these questions, we would know if it's at least potentially possible. Then we need to test it to see if it could actually work. But even then, you can't charge your phone by holding it over a flame. Mobile phone chargers just don't work that way. So how can we turn candle power into electric power? Enter the Stirling engine. A Stirling engine? A Stirling engine is what we are going to try to use to turn heat energy into mechanical energy, which in turn will run a generator to produce the electrical energy we need. But Stirling engines have been around for 200 years, and nobody uses them anymore. Well, NASA seems to think they're pretty useful for long distance space flights where solar energy starts to get sparse. OK, but what is a Stirling engine? Robert Stirling, a Scottish minister, came up with a new type of energy cycle for an engine in 1816 based on heat transfer, well before thermodynamics was what the cool engineers played with. Most other engine cycles rely on pressure differentials, but the Stirling engine relies on temperature differentials. So they require much less energy and can potentially operate off very low temperatures like a candle flame. The problem is that Stirling engines don't generate a whole lot of torque, so they won't do 0 to 60 in any time you would care about. However, they could be good at low torque, medium energy production, like local power generation for a single device. NASA uses Stirling engines that are powered by constant heat from radioisotopes. Of course, the Department of Energy seems to frown on me or Sheldon playing with radioisotopes. So tea lights are an option. We're going to use a more traditional form of Stirling engine for these tests. If you like this content, there are other variations that we could test in the future. Let's take a quick look at how a Stirling engine works, whilst avoiding the pit of thermodynamics. A Stirling engine works by heating, expanding, and moving hot air from the displacer cylinder to the working cylinder, where the air is cooled and contracts. The working piston drives a flywheel that will drive a generator and causes the displacer cylinder to return to the starting point. See? Magic! If there's interest, We'll look at the details of the Stirling cycle in another video. Stirling engines fall into three major categories, but to keep things simple, we are only going to consider the gamma style engine in this video. The gamma engine has a separate displacer and work cylinder connected via a channel to move heated air from one cylinder to the other. Recent research shows that the gamma engine has a practical efficiency level of around about 9.8%. So what does that mean for our tea light charger? First, how much power does your mobile phone need in order to charge? The nominal voltage level for a simple USB charging cable is 5 volts DC. The minimum USB charging current at 5 volts is 30 milliamps. And back to your high school classes, we know that power in watts equals voltage times current. So in this case, the power equals 5 volts times 30 milliamps, or about a quarter of a watt. So we need at least a quarter watt of power to charge a phone. OK, but how much energy is in a candle flame? 
the temperature at the tip of the flame is 1200 degrees centigrade. This represents about 80 watts of heat energy. If you assume a gamma engine is about 9.8% efficient, then there should be about 7.8 watts of power available to our charger. If we consider that when we use a DC motor as a generator, it is capable of about 50% efficiency, then we should have about 4 watts available for the mobile phone to charge. So it's theoretically possible. Of course, any given engine will fall below the maximum efficiency levels due to issues like heat transfer rates, the type of gas used, and a whole range of other issues. But if we halve our Stirling engine expectations to 5% efficiency, then we would still potentially get 2 watts of charging power. Way more than the quarter watt of power our phone requires to charge. This is what our T-Lite experimental charging setup looks like. We have a gamma Stirling engine, a heat source, a small DC electric motor that will act as the generator, a USB power regulator, as I don't want to blow up my phone, and a digital multimeter to take voltage and current readings. How much voltage will the motor produce? Well, here we are using an oscilloscope to monitor the voltage levels. If we use an alcohol burner as a heat source, we can get up to a peak voltage of 6 volts DC, with a mean DC voltage of 5.6 volts. A more important question may be, how much current can we pull from the DC motor generator? In this test, we are running the output from the generator through a digital multimeter and we're getting about 48 milliamps of current, which is more than the 30 milliamps that we said we needed earlier. But enough talking, let's charge up my phone. Ta-da! Well, okay. So we may not have told the whole truth. Most people know that you should never start a land war in Asia. But the truth is, you should never trust an Aussie when facts stand in the way of a good story. Here's what really happened. I swapped out the alcohol burner for the tea light for the last couple of frames. And the test quickly finished. Badly. Rot row. However, here are the results of using an alcohol burner. As you can see here, our alcohol burner really can charge the phone. No, really, would I lie to you? The actual charging rate will not blow your socks off, but it does charge the phone. Given that the theory looked good, what is the problem? In this particular Stirling engine, the displacer cylinder has a very large thermal mass. It takes five to six minutes for the alcohol burner to get this engine up to a stable maximum voltage, around about six volts. This tea light flame doesn't have quite enough energy to overcome the inefficiencies in this particular engine. But we also have this engine. So, what do we think would happen in this case? Stay tuned for the next exciting installment as we pursue charging your mobile phone with a tea light.